Hello everybody, uh, this is Edward again uh, for an li another live stream. Uh, today uh, it's not V-Collection, uh, it's Pigments, so I'm super happy because uh, it's one of my favorite products. So uh, I hope you're doing good. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, ask questions in the chat and to communicate. I can see your messages, I'll try to check from time to time. And uh, yeah, super happy to be here and here uh, we are. We want to talk about pigments five. So uh, I'm just putting the chat on. All right. So I can see your messages. <coughs> All right. So yeah, today pigments five. Uh, another free update for you guys. So uh, if you didn't download it, I'd highly recommend to uh, check it out. There are some improvements. We're going to cover them uh, real quick. So. Uh, yeah, super excited again. Uh, Pigments is really, uh, for those who don't know, our um, uh, most advanced like sound design uh, synthesizer. So uh, the more the years passes, the more we make updates and uh, feedback is really, really good uh, every time. Of course, because it's free, but because we listen to you and we try to implement stuff that you asked for and that would be useful for you. So yeah, uh, super excited again. Uh, so the update came with a bunch of new features and also a new, sand a new sound bank, factory sound bank and three expansion packs. Uh, so if you buy pigments right now, you get the expansion pack free. And for those who uh, got the free updates as owners, um, you have a pretty good discount on the sounds. So uh, once again, check it out. Uh, I mean, we'll probably talk about it uh, briefly, but the, the expansions are really, really good. The new factory is really good. Uh, so yeah, a lot of inspiring uh, influences to uh, to discover. So yeah, uh, back on Pigments Five. So uh, yeah, we we have a different uh, set of changes here. Um, so uh, we can maybe talk uh, about uh, the visual stuff. Uh, let's say. So here on screen you can see uh, the play view. Uh, so we reworked um, a little bit this view as well. So the first thing you might notice. is uh, this uh, beautiful uh, rainbow in the center. And uh, it's a new visualizer for the play view. So basically the play view, if you don't know it, it's a, let's say a more browsing oriented uh, view. Uh, and this just summarizes everything, uh, every parameters you need to browse presets. So being able to uh, change the pitch to uh, alter the main parameters of the engines, uh, remove noise, add noise, uh, remove sub add sub oscillator, adjust your filters, and even the effects on the right. Uh, so we did a few improvements here. For example, before you couldn't really uh, mute or unmute the noise generators from this view. So now when you hover this, like, uh, these knobs, you can just mute them uh, quickly which allows uh, maybe to remove unwanted noises or sub oscillators in some of the presets. Uh, also, we uh, kind of modified this section on the right, the FX section, to make it look a little bit better. And now you can navigate uh, between the different tabs and check the effects or remove them if you want to. And you can also mute the, the bus if you want by clicking on the tab again, which can be convenient if you want to uh, maybe isolate uh, a part of the sound or understand how it's made. So yeah, and uh, there's also a new style for the for the wheels here. So let me resize a little bit, like this. Okay, and uh, yeah, so basically uh, a little bit of rework here and there. Uh, so there are micro adjustments that you might be not seeing. And also there's a the new keyboard, which is kind of, I, I pretty like it, it's a bit more modern. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty much what's new on this view. Uh, I already uh, see uh, a question about the sequencer. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the sequencer afterwards. Someone is asking, why is the, isn't the sequencer polyphonic? Well, uh, 
if you look at the sequencer, uh, I can just show you briefly. Uh, it's a step sequencer, so uh, you have attributes per node. And uh, so uh, if it was polyphonic, you would be able to write several nodes uh, like in the sequencer. And so the attributes uh, would be a problem because it's uh, assigned per step right now and not uh, and not, uh, yeah, not the... Uh... Yeah, so basically, uh, I already forgot where what I was doing before. So we were just about to leave the play view. Uh, still checking like uh, some cosmetic changes. Uh, I don't know if you checked a little bit, but uh, all the visualizers like from the granular, from the wavetable, uh, have been reworked. So it's a little bit more modern right now. Uh, can we... So for example, if we check the new wave tables from the from Pigments 5, like uh, I think it looks really good. Uh, I prefer this style to be honest. And uh, yeah, so it's always good to have a little bit of improvement. It's like when you update your OS, uh, sometimes it just looks a little bit uh, better, just a few round uh, corners and so on. And here we try to do the same every time just to give a little bit more like uh, refreshments. Uh, on the visuals. So yeah, pretty looking good. Uh, even for example, the harmonic oscillator has been changed. So most of the visualizers are more revolved uh, around the blue uh, tones right now. And uh, yeah, I think it looks better. I don't know what you think, Chad. But yeah. <coughs> so yeah, basically uh, in the update, uh, I'll just init. So we have new presets. Uh, like I said, uh, we can just briefly check. So, oh yeah, I have a lot of sound banks. Uh, so there's the pigments 5.0 here. And basically you have a uh, new presets here. So you noticed now the default preset is a very simple preset with a sign. So it was a big debate in house uh, because some people like to have a very demonstrative preset. And some people like me uh, prefer to have something very playable that doesn't take a, a lot of speed, that is not aggressive, so that you can just like uh, try melodies and so on, and just getting started from a, like a blank canvas, I would say. So this new, this new, uh, this new like welcome preset, I really like it. Uh, I don't know if you tried it already, uh, but it's basically a sine wave. And uh, you have just a few macros that are pretty good. I really like the time one. Like yeah. And uh, you have, uh, of course, one map to the timber just on the wavetable, some unison, and some reverb. So I really like to start from this ca canvas. Uh, yeah. So then we have a lot of new presets, so various, very various in the in the factory library. So a lot of uh, small keys, like I really like to make keys with pigments. These are these are really really nice. Some strings like here, like. Or some like ambient stuff. This one is really nice. So yeah, mixing uh, some keys and some like background noises. I really like it. It's really beautiful. So yeah, there's a bunch of new sounds basically, uh, like uh, 110 or something like this. So uh, some lo-fi stuff, some uh, trappy stuff, some very electronic stuff. So yeah, so the Various things like uh, depending on your taste, I'm pretty sure you will find something uh, something good. Uh, we are trying to spend more and more energy to refine the sounds we put in the plugin. 
uh, like we received some some messages like saying like the first sounds are not as good as the new ones so it's a, a good sign because we've put a lot of efforts trying to uh, like maybe refine a little bit the style into things that are more like contemporary and uh, trying to you know get a signature sound from, for pigments so i hope the new sounds will uh, uh, will be pleasant for you and you will find like uh, something attractive uh, so yeah so of course on top of that we have like three expansions um, so i'm not sure i will just demo all of them but one is like uh, called Be beats explorations and uh, this one is really really nice so this one is inspired by uh, some underground uh, like say uh, 2014 uh, type of uh, of trap uh, like called plug and uh, so basically there's a kind of uh, community around this kind of sounds uh, so it's kind of ambient trap and so basically in the beginning you have a lot of 808 and so on and all of them are very like uh, a bit crushed or distorted so the, th the theme of this expansion is really around like uh, textural uh, ambience uh, bit crushed uh, stuff so uh, it's, it actually fits a lot of different genres. Uh, I, I really recommend to uh, check out the, the sounds. Uh, a lot of textures, and I think you can really use them for a lot of different genres. Uh, so I... So uh, we have another expansion called Liquid Explorations. And uh, this one is really to make uh, like liquid drum and bass. So for those who don't know, liquid drum and bass is really like, a, let's say, a, the soft side of drum and bass, with like very like uh, organic sounds, like uh, gro groovy, uh, warm sounds. And this one is uh, very like uh, various. There are a lot of different sounds that are pretty good. Like uh, influences of pop, of like soul and so on. and still with some like uh, modern tweaks and uh, influences. So yeah. So if you uh, if you like like a uh, modern uh, liquid German bass like it's pretty t trendy these days, you should check it out. It's pretty good. And this one, Expressive Explorations, it's too bad I don't have a MP controller with me. I have a mini lab, actually. But uh, this one is really made uh, for um, to provide expressive sounds. So if you have an MP controller, I think this is what you need. Uh, I hear a lot of people complaining that they don't have a lot of sounds to play with the MP uh, controller. And uh, basically, uh, Pigments is pretty good for MP. And uh, what we tried to do, so our implementation involves like the slide on the first macro. And uh, we asked the sound designers uh, to have to think uh, about a good usage of the first macro uh, for the slide. So uh, there are a lot of acoustic sounds or expressive sounds like pads and so on. And uh, if you have like, a, even if you have a normal keyboard, actually, these are really expressive and should be responsive to your playing. So a uh, velocity and so on. But if you have a MP controller, you should definitely check it out. So yeah, the three banks like are for for free free by, by pigments, and if you. Uh, if you update for free as an owner, uh, there is a pretty good discount, so do not hesitate to check them out. It's a way to support us uh, as we provide free updates. So uh, we appreciate if you like the sounds. So yeah, uh, what else? So uh, I'm not sure where should I start from there. Uh, maybe I can just show you briefly the new features and then I will try to uh, show them uh, into a project or something. Uh, so of course, like in the utility engine, so it was very much asked by the by the community. So we implemented a way to uh, process audio with pigments. And um, if you see here, you have the second noise engine, and there is a little arrow now, and it allows you basically to select another mode. And this one is called audio input. 
So I'm not. Uh, I will not uh, check it out right now. But uh, basically, what you can do is fe feed uh, audio in pigments, and uh, process it using pretty much everything, like the filters, the effects, and of course, you can use the modulators. And uh, that's pretty convenient if you want to, you know, make everything move and so on. So of course, we have uh, motions to do that, uh, the effects, but uh, you can do pretty crazy stuff like uh, resonators and so on and play the play it with the keyboard so it's pretty convenient so I will show you just uh, I, I used it in a, in the track I have in the background I did some experimental uh, very uh, <laughs> distorted stuff so I hope you won't you you will uh, tolerate this but I, I tried to have fun with this so I will just show you uh, right after and um, if I reset my song uh, so, maybe I, I should just select one sound briefly, some keys or something like this. Let me find a sound real quick. Might be a little bass, I'm not sure what to use. Oh, we can try this. And so, one of the news is the rework of the sequencer. So this sequencer in pigments is pretty unique, right? Unless like uh, unlike the competitors, we have a pretty advanced sequencer in there. So it was already pretty cool. Uh, um, uh, yeah, so there's a question. I'll just uh, reply briefly. Uh, Anton is asking if you can plug your bass and process it with pigments. Yeah, man, you can. Like uh, I will show you right after how to, how to do it, but you, you just have to use the sidechain input. So as soon as you can send the uh, the sound of a track uh, in the in pigments, you you're good to go. So whether whether it's like you're playing a bass or something, it works. So basically, we had the sequencer before, but we reworked it. We changed uh, quite some stuff uh, under the hood. So first, visually, you can see that it's different. And uh, so we added some options. For example, now you can easily mute steps. Before you you had to play with the with the probability. And um, and basically we worked a little bit the, the layout to make it a bit more clear. And uh, so there are uh, different news. But so the big news is we, we have a new like generation algorithm. Uh, so it's based on two things. Uh, first, you have the, um, the generative scales here. So b b basically before we had some classic scales, which are like uh, the standard uh, stuff, like ma major, minor, minor, and so on. And now we have like dedicated generative scales. Uh, so uh, depending on what you choose, you can see below you have a sort of diagram that represents the notes and the probability of the notes to uh, occur. And depending on what you want to do, uh, well, you can select different uh, different scales, and it's a good uh, a good starting point if you're looking for ideas because you don't know what to do or something. Or sometimes, like if you have uh, somewhere in your track you want to do something. Uh, well, uh, you can just basically uh, try to get new ideas, fresh ideas with this. And uh, so I used it in the track uh, in background, so I will just show you uh, how, how I did and we'll try to get something out of it. And uh, we have new playback modes as well. So if you want to like uh, have a less redundant feel and so on you have uh, now like a forward backward modes random and so on so uh, if you're going like full crazy uh, generative uh, kind of uh, kind of thing like uh, well you can just basically press a note and listen to it for one hour it will never be the same so it's pretty crazy uh, for example like if you do like this random And if I like uh, put polymetry, for example. Well, the preset doesn't really work, so I can actually I can show you a new feature. You can lock the sequencer here, like this, and then you can change the preset. So it's pretty inspiring. Like uh, if you found, uh, for example, a sequence that uh, is interesting or something, 
Well, you can just change sounds until something works. Like, for example, this is way better than before, right? And if I want to go crazy, I can put the random mode. If you want to do a generative stuff, so maybe I prefer something that is uh, some phrases. So Anton, now you, you have to use the keyboard to start the sequencer. However, you have a hold button. So if you just click hold here in the keyboard panel and uh, use a key like uh, like on the on the keyboard, you can just start like this. If you don't have a keyboard or something. So yeah. So like this one's pretty crazy. Uh, it's really nice like to be able to generate ideas like if you're dry uh, at some point or work too much. Like sometimes this is a good way to to uh, move one step forward. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, maybe now, uh, like uh, everybody covered this, uh, these features, so maybe we can just like uh, try to mess around with, the, with some sounds. Uh, so I uh, prefer to warn you, uh, I did something pretty drastic, uh, pretty intense. Uh, the first thing is like this intro is some kind of EV drone where I use pigments to process the sound. So I will show you how I did and we'll just like reverse the, the sound. So, uh, yeah. checking the comments real quick. Uh, where can you uh, submit feature requests? Well, uh, you can uh, submit here in the chat. Otherwise, you can send them uh, to the support to officially have it tech, uh, registered. So, uh, this will be play pretty loud. So, it's uh, some kind of noisy experimental sound I will play. So, be ready. So yeah, so here uh, it's pretty intense and drastic. So what am I doing exactly? So we have a bus uh, with a strong uh, distortion and limiter. And here I'm uh, generating a smaller sound with pigments. And uh, then I'm using like the audio in to uh, create feedback. So uh, if I turn the volume really up, uh, it can uh, go uh, full Larsen mode and crazy. So yeah, here like this. So I gotta be cra uh, I gotta be careful not to uh, break your ears, but uh, it's really uh, funny, you know, to uh, juggle between like glass and, and and so on. So you can create pretty organic stuff. And here, I go really crazy on the bass, and I will just like try to decompose uh, the sound. So I'm just gonna mute all the effects right now, um, because like a lot is happening in the effects. You will see. So I'll just deconstruct everything. And uh, let's check it out. So if you don't like uh, ambient, uh, hardcore uh, ambient music, uh, it's probably not the good sound for you, but it's still interesting to, uh, to see how I did. So without the effects, so what we hear in the background, so there's modulation tool here. Uh, I'll just remove it for, for the time being. Uh, so what you hear basically is just uh, some kind of sine wave uh, that goes pretty hard in a, in a limiter and a bit of distortion, but uh, pretty much everything was done here. So what I wanted to do is basically take everything, every artifact uh, very up and uh, like to really uh, hear like all the defects of the sound. So first thing I did is introducing a, a multiband compressor. So you can already see that there are some stuff happening a bit more than before. And then I added distortion. So I think I started from this preset and I just tweaked it the way I want it. So already I'm getting like some... Uh... So okay, so this sound is not uh, from uh, pigments. It's actually, I resampled pigments. So I'll just listen to pigments right now. Like this. So then I wanted to add like more crackles and more texture. So I added some bit, cr bit crusher. And already we have something there. 
so it added like some hiss, some uh, defects in the sound, like with the jitter, uh, stuff like that, some squealing the, with the down sampling. It's pretty good. And then I wanted a bit more mess, uh, so I just added some tape echo. See? And everything I'm doing might start the Larsen, like because I'm doing feedback right now, if you remember. So uh, I will just have to be careful not to destroy your ears. So I wanted more width as well, so I added unison. Like this. Just a little bit like this. And uh, basically at the end I just wanted to protect the ears uh, from the last sense. And then, so this is a new feature actually. Uh, I need to show you. So uh, here the aux, basically before it was uh, before the, the other uh, FX bus. So you were sending the sound right after the, the effects, the, the filters. And now, since this version, you can route the, the aux uh, bus, so the send, to be behind the effects so that you can craft your timber before and then send it into your reverb. And what I, what I did here is adding a shimmer reverb. You can hear, no. you can hear it here. But it's, it's hard to hear it, right? So I added some multiband compression and another a bit crusher. And now, now we have all the residuals. And already it starts to look uh, like something. And here I'm modulating the, um, like the uh, audio in volume so that I can start the feedback a little bit later because if I turn it all the way up in the beginning, it's too messy. So feedback is great, but you gotta be ca careful. And uh, what's pretty good is because you're in pigments, you can modulate basically uh, pretty much everything you want. So the feedback, I can choose exactly when uh, does it have to kick in. And also I added like this uh, function generator on the cutoff of the filter here to create this kind of moments. See? For example, if I just only touch the, uh, the filter on the distortion here, it might go into feedback, you know? So I prefer to uh, keep it pretty low. So yeah. So we have something pretty crazy already. So this is where, how I did like this kind of intro. And for example, this sound, I basically resampled uh, pigments and reversed it. So I can just uh, do it again right now to show you. Uh, so I, I did, I did, uh, I do this uh, pretty often. I said resampling my track, um, and uh, then record like this. Maybe I should unmute this. Like this. Oh, I probably changed a lot of. Th uh, I changed some stuff in the patch. It's way more hardcore than before. Oh, before it was a little bit more like uh, tamed. So I don't really remember what I changed. To be honest, it's all right. Uh, let me check real quick in the effects. Maybe less multiband. Like this, should be better, less delay, less unison, should be more under control. And so, uh, maybe I should mention that if you want to feed audio in the in pigments, so the engine is here in this tab, audio in. What do you need to do before is you get to your track. So it might might not work with VST2, maybe only VST3 in audio unit. You have the site and input regenerally in your door here, and you select the track you want to fit in the in the plugin. And then you can handle the gain here. So here I I'm being cautious because if I turn it up, it will go like full crazy. Um, so 
Yeah. So basically what I did here, I resampled the outputs. So I'm just gonna turn it, this down like a lot. This is what I had. And uh, so it's there is a reverb on this one. And what I, what I like to do is, for example, uh, use time stretch, change the algorithm, like uh, reverse the reverse the, the audio like this and try to, to mess around and try to mess around like this and you can like uh, for example like uh, change the pitch or put it pitch it down And depending on what you do, you can get some pretty crazy results. For example, this, I really like it. And then you can use it in your track, you know. So this is what I did here and here. Yeah, so I'm going to remove that. So yeah, and then I did the second part on the track. A little bit. Here it's a, some sort of intro. The resampling. So here. So same logic, here I have a bus with like some crazy, crazy limiter and distortion and I have my bass going in, made with pigments. And uh, I have one bass here and some kind of growl. So uh, the growl, I did it on pigments. And basically what I did is like a simple technique using phase modulation and uh, the second engine as a cross modulator. So starting from a sine wave on the engine that does the sound. And the second engine, I muted it here. And I'm just using it to modulate the other one. So I'm moving a little bit the wavetable and so on. And it does some kind of cool, like a uh, dubstep sound. Uh, I like bass music, so. Uh, so yeah. So what I wanted to do here is uh, adding some melodies. And uh, so let's get in pigments. And uh, so what I like to do when I'm looking for IDs like this, well, uh, so I like this thing. So I'm using like the generation to create IDs. So for example, I have this first like uh, phrase and maybe I can do a second one. So I'm just going to create a new pattern. And here, like this, I create a MIDI note. And here we can just generate sequences basically. It works pretty well already. Uh, let's just loop here. It works, right? Well, we can try maybe something else. So you might have to uh, uh, try a few times, you know. So like this. Maybe this would work. So yeah, it works pretty well. Like uh, I did, I did like three, four attempts, 
And so I really like to do it. So sometimes when there is something I like, uh, I'm just like uh, editing a little bit what I, uh, uh, if I don't like some of the, some content of the sequence and uh, I'm good to go. So yeah, poof, duplicate. I could add a chord here, so I just prepared a chord. Uh, can just make a quick sound. So right now it looks like this. Just a sine wave, basically it's a welcome preset. Maybe I can try to do uh, some kind of pad. That works. Let's do some like ring mod. Just gonna restart from the beginning. Reverb. Need some texture. There we go, we have small melodies, good to go. Pretty cool. Uh, what else can we do? So I have just a drum loop here, nothing fancy. Uh, ah, yeah. So here at the end, maybe we could do just a small variation, you know, uh, using uh, the audio processing from Pigments again. Uh, so this last part. So maybe here, what we could do. So here I created a track called Resonator. I have pigments set up. I selected the drums as the input. You see, 15. Uh, post FX so that I can mute the track here. And what I would like to do is, for example, the drums, I would like to mute them at this very end. And maybe hear the drum through pigments and try to mess around with the sound. We'll figure out how to do, but like just to a cool variation at the end of the pattern. So first thing I need to do is mute the track here. So uh, how, am, how am I going to do? I'm just going to turn the volume down here like this. Oh no. Like this. Okay. Maybe I can uh, mute the bass as well. Okay, so here we have some empty space that we want to fill with some cool variation. So, <coughs> sorry. So what I can do now is, uh, so, Set up my MIDI keyboard, and right now I set up pigments uh, here. And uh, when I'm pressing a key, the, the sound will uh, pass uh, through. You see? So I'm just going to loop this part like this. And now, so when I'm pressing a key, there is there is sound uh, through, but when I'm not pressing a key, there is nothing. So what I can do now is uh, figure uh, an idea, like how can I make this uh, drum loop a bit more crazy at the end. First thing maybe I think about is doing a resonator because I call this track like this. So, okay, uh, so we can take a comb filter, for example, and. Uh, And I can play, I can even play the drums like. And maybe I can try to do something like this. So uh, I will just set up. So 
So maybe just one note is enough. We'll try with this one. F. Okay, I'll solo this one. Okay, and uh, maybe I can apply a few other effects, for example. Play unison, works pretty well. Or maybe with the red trig. Give. Yeah, pretty good. And uh, what else can I do? Yeah, thank you for the positive words, guys. Uh, it's been a while, I haven't had the chat. Oh, D-Man, if you have a problem with your macro one, it's because MP is enabled. Uh, so there are several modes uh, uh, on the MP, and basically the slide of the MP is taking, the, taking over the macro one. So. Either you want to disable the MP, or you can change the uh, options. You have like absolute relative options, and if if you set up another uh, value here, it will unlock the macro. Hope it helps. Uh, yeah. So uh, what can I add? I don't know what to add. Uh, maybe EQ. I will use the filters to EQ. Like this. Maybe a small eye pass. Ah, maybe I can do an automation here. The other way. Okay. Uh, something like this. Go for a phase. Pretty good. Uh, something else or? Yeah. Flanger, even more extreme. Okay, maybe that's enough. Let's uh, let's try. Pretty good, right? So yeah, you can use it to do uh, this kind of breaks. You know, it works pretty well. Uh, and if you want to save it, you can even like uh, create a small audio track, resampling. Uh, so for this, this. Like this, so I have my, uh, my break done in audio and I can maybe like mess around with the effects again and uh, I can create a lot of different stuff. So of course, like I, I could have done so many things, you know, and what I would suggest is when you use pigments like this as an effect, like try to get on the modulators, try to uh, use uh, the features that will make it, uh, you know, worthless, uh, not worthless, like worthwhile, sorry, um, in this context, like uh, as you have like all the effects, the filters, uh, you know, accessible and the modulators that can be triggered with the, the keyboard and so on. You can do pre things that are hard to do uh, otherwise. So, uh, so yeah. So it worked pretty well here. I mean, it was like, what? Two minutes, five minutes? Small little break. Boom. So yeah. <coughs> Pretty good. 
So yeah, so I think I covered pretty much everything uh, from the updates. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, so maybe we'll go uh, and deal with the questions. I'm just checking the chat really quick. Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, should we go with, uh, with the questions? Okay, so I'm switching to the questions. Uh, thank you to the team who noted all the questions during the live stream. Uh, so, first question. Why isn't the sequence of polyphonic? Um, I talked about it before. Uh, so I, it's a step sequencer. So, you know, the implementation is for each step you have uh, different attributes and with polymetry and so on. It's uh, kind of weird to uh, have all these attributes. Uh, I mean, you, you can't really do that. Uh, otherwise, you would go for another type of sequencer that doesn't do polymetry and so on. And in this case, you could do like uh, some uh, polyphonic sequences. But here, the approach was more like generative sequencers and so on, like uh, try to get something crazy with it. Uh, so it's less like programming melodies and more like uh, creating out of uh, out of the the thing, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, a question about the play view. Uh, so, I think push right now is mapping the the parameters by order. So, on the push, you will have probably like a mapping with the order of uh, the VST parameters. Uh, but on the play view, the controls are the same that on the same uh, on the scene view. It's it's just aliases. Okay. Yeah, so the question was like, uh, uh, do I have to map manually the parameters in push? So I remember, I remember that back in the days, push uh, was not perfect on pigments because you have so many parameters and uh, like, uh, like a thousand parameters or something. But uh, yeah. So someone says, uh, he purchased the, the sound banks. Thank you for purchasing the sound banks. Uh, and used um, the, an MPE controller uh, and noticed that the hold was behaving different. Uh, is it normal? Is it a bug? Uh, that's a good question. I, I didn't know the, the behavior was different. So uh, if you think it's a bug, uh, I'd appreciate if you could send a message to the support team and they will register it and will be informed and try to check it out. So yeah, a question I replied before that uh, someone asked if he can plug like his bass guitar or basically any instruments or even your voice uh, in pigments uh, in pigment sidechain input and try to process the audio with it. And yes, of course, like basically anything that's in your door, you can uh, route it to a group or something. You can even merge different tracks together, and then you can just uh, get it in pigments and try to mess around with this. So yeah, definitely. Uh, another question I just replied, um, you don't have a start and stop uh, paradigm in the sequencer, but you have to press a key. So if you don't have a MIDI keyboard at hand, you can of course use the visual keyboard in the keyboard section. And if you want to keep it uh, playing, you can uh, use the hold button and it will basically hold the key and uh, yeah, and latch the, the play. <clears throat> so there is a question about uh, Killab88, uh, someone who seems to have a problem, so I don't know what happens, but if you have problems, you, you should contact our support team. They are the best in the industry, I swear. So uh, they will probably have a, a reply for you. Uh, can you process your own kick samples in Pigments 5FX? Uh, yes, you can actually. You don't even have to uh, to uh, like to use the audio uh, input because you can load samples in uh, pigments and play them directly. Otherwise, you can of course route any audio in pigments. So uh, it's up to you what you prefer. But for example, we have like 808 uh, samples uh, in the sample engine, and uh, I mean it's pretty good. Uh, I like to use it. Uh, you know, you can just start from a very like. Uh, 
clean uh, sample and uh, get it dirty and so on. There are even a lot of uh, 808 uh, kick sounds in the um, Beats Explorations uh, expansion. I really like them. Uh, the expansions, uh, I don't think they are in NKS. Uh, I'm not sure about it, to be honest. Uh, uh, this is a question uh, I should ask the sound design team. Yeah, someone was asking in the chat if the banks were NKS. Okay, so I'll, I'll repeat it because maybe a few users had this problem. If you see your macro one knob uh, grade or like uh, an accessible, it's because you have MP on. And uh, when you have MP on, so in the side panel, uh, so on the right side of the plugin, you have a cogwheel. And in the settings tab, you can disable or enable the MP. And uh, you can still have it uh, enabled and uh, have the macro knob accessible, but you need to uh, change the mode you're, you're in. So maybe it's because you have an absolute mode selected or something, which makes uh, the knob controlled exclusively by the MP. So if you select another mode or just disable the MP, you won't have this problem anymore. Uh, someone is asking if we have any plans for multi-output audio. To be honest, right now, I don't think so. Uh, we talked about it uh, for, uh, you know, um, how do you call that? The Dolby Atmos stuff and so on. But I felt like on pigments, there are probably stuff that people want more than multiple outputs, you know. So uh, if you have like a precise idea on why do you want like multiple outputs and so on, um, I'm still curious. So send this like feature request over to the support and it's always good to hear why you need that. Okay, someone is saying uh, I'm pretty scared uh, with the CPU on pigments uh, because I have a, a like average uh, CPU or something. Uh, so, of course, pigment is a pretty advanced synth, so it's not like it doesn't, uh, the consumption is like uh, zero. But uh, during this update, we, uh, we now support multi core processing. So if you have a computer with like weak cores, uh, well, what it does is it takes the CPU consumption and divides it uh, on four cores. So if one instance of pigment is making like your computer cr uh, doing crackles and so on, it's because you are overloading one core in general. So uh, using this function in the settings, uh, you will alleviate the CPU load uh, on a single core, which is often a good idea. And uh, yeah. So it should be better at least. So, but you can try to demo and and make up your mind by yourself. And note that there are some presets that are very like uh, CPU greedy, let's say, and some other presets that are pretty uh, that are fairly acceptable. So uh, it really depends on if you go crazy, you can go crazy with pigments like a lot of grains, a lot of harmonics in the harmonic engine, a lot of unison voices, and so on. So it really depends on the usage you make. If you make a like normal usage, it should be fine. If you do like crazy sound design stuff, like uh, going completely crazy, you can burst any uh, any CPU. But that's just because we there are no limits, you know. Uh, so someone is asking, can you play notes on the audio in? Uh, so. If you looked what I did before, uh, I did some kind of resonator uh, on the drums. And then wh what I did is I routed the audio of the drums in pigments. And then I used the comb filter, right, in the filter section. And the co on the comb filter, I had the keyboard tracking enabled, which allowed me to play the note I wanted it to resonate. So basically, I made uh, the drums resonate in F because my project was in F. So you can actually play the sound. Uh, you know, uh, that goes uh, through the audio in. So it's pretty convenient. There are several ways to do it, to do it but with the comb, it's really easy. Please give more info about the sequencer. Uh, so the sequencer, I did the first introduction earlier in the stream. And I jumped again uh, during uh, the end of the stream, uh, doing some like, uh, uh, you know, like generation and so on. So uh, if you missed this part, maybe you can just jump uh, earlier in the stream 
and uh, there is a, a little bit introduction of the news uh, at this moment. Uh, how can I tap delay with my performance? Uh, well, uh, I guess with your dough, um, or if you, yeah, basically with your dough or something, because uh, you can sync pretty much everything that has a rate or a tempo in pigments. So uh, if it's synced to your dough and you change the tempo of your dough, it will follow the tempo of the dough. So uh, if you can tap tempo in your dough, or if you're doing automations on the tempo in your dough, it will follow it by itself. Uh, so someone is asking, can I split the keyboard octave uh, and uh, play two sounds like a bit timbral? You can't. Uh, Pigments is more timbral, but if you have Analog Lab, you can uh, create multi presets uh, in Analog Lab. So meaning you can split the keyboard or layer them, and then you can assign uh, a sound to the part A and a sound to the part B. And in Analog Lab, you can do it, no problem. Okay, someone is asking, uh, do we plan to uh, respond to uh, patch change, like preset change, program change in DAW? Um, I think it works, but, but you need to use playlist. So uh, in the browser, uh, you can create playlist. Uh, so you will need to access the full browser to do that. And when you, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the bank number is the playlist. So if you have 10 playlists, uh, you will have to uh, set the bank to the number of your playlist. I think you, it starts from zero. And then uh, the program number will determine the preset number in this playlist. So I think it works, to be honest. I, I don't use it, so, but uh, I think it works in all our instruments. This is like... A... Okay, and uh, I think that's all for the questions. Just double checking in the chat. Okay, so only love messages, that's good. Well, uh, thank you so much for attending, guys. Uh, once again, always a pleasure to be here with you. I uh, hope the demo was okay and that you learned some stuff. And uh, uh, I mean, super excited to work on pigments. It's really uh, a unique instrument, in my opinion. Uh, despite you know the depth of the instruments, I think it's really easy. And if you are scared to try pigments, I think you should try it uh, because uh, everything is very like... Uh, you know, uh, straightforward, like you can draw the, you drag and drop the modulations, you have a lot of effects, you have different forms of synthesis, you have a lot of presets, so you, it's easy just to take a preset when you like a sound and trying to get your hands dirty and turn knobs and trying to learn step by step, you know. And uh, yeah, I mean, super happy to work on these instruments. Uh, I'm already working on scheduling the next uh, the next features to add uh, next year's. So uh, if you have ideas of feature requests and so on, I mean, you should send us messages or post on the forum or, you know, send directly to the support. They count the feature request. So yeah, feel free to express yourself. Uh, I mean, most of the inspiration I have to uh, schedule the update is really uh, coming from you guys because this is what we do. This is for you. So uh, yeah, pretty excited. Uh, don't forget. We have a special offer right now. So for people who don't get pigment, uh, who don't have pigments, it's in discount. So it's pretty cheap. So you should jump uh, on it if you're hesitating. And for the users, uh, the update is free, you know. So uh, update pigments and have fun. And remember, we have expansions. This is how we make money uh, with pigments. So if you like what we do, uh, do not hesitate to buy the sounds. It will uh, help us like continue improving this instrument. And uh, yeah, I. Super happy to be with you again. Uh, I hope we'll see each other next time. And in the meantime, please make sound with pigments. And see you next time. Cheers.